This is Professor Kassini Nazir, and this is grad student Shruti Shripati, and I'm grad student Poweri. The goal of our proposal is creating a social service to enhance the experience of public art through technological means to strengthen the relationship between city and community. So, I would like to talk our project by way of the golden circle. The concept comes from Simon Sinek. So, we believe public art engages civic dialogue and community. It helps us be conscious of the city culture, city history, and the city itself. And then we did a, re did a research on public art and our community to conceive and design a social service to enhance the experience of public art. So, our project, ArtSide, bridges the city and community, which is a social platform for sharing the experience of public art. So, the inspiration for ArtSide came from the popular mobile game called Pokemon Go. And here's a question. How many of you have played the Pokemon Go? And how many of you are still playing Pokemon Go? Okay. If you don't know, the Pokemon Go works by using GPS and augmented reality to bring up cool looking Pokemon on your screen and over that on top of what you see and in front of you. And this game encourages people to hang out together, to catch Pokemon, and to fight the beast with other users. In Pokemon Go, the Pokestop is a specific location that has more monsters than the normal sites. So users will be encouraged to go to this pocket, pocket stop to catch Pokemon. So here's a key point. Most of pocket stops are located at very popular and crowded sites existing public art. So it inspired me to design an art site. Pokemon Go build their community for collecting Pokemon monsters successfully. And why not build our own community for sharing the appreciation of public art by ourselves? So again, we believe public art engage, engages civic dialogue and community. It helps us be conscious of the city culture, city history, and the city itself. However, there are few environments where people regularly share their thoughts of public art. So we would like to create a social service to build the community for appreciating public art. The ultimate goal is to build the art side ecology to let people share their civic experience from all over the world. So, why public art? What would life be like without the firework displays, the puppet parades, the sculpture parks, and visionary roadside for the art? These landmark and special events enhance our experience of a place and art quality of life. They create Send a sense of pride and community identity. They represent the public history of city, enrich the culture, and reflect the public thinking in society. So there's a lot of public art in our daily life, and most of the time we just pass through it. We might not get or miss the meaning beyond this gorgeous sculpture. And people interact with public art directly. However, people are not always aware of the connection to the city. There is some city culture and history embedded in the public art. The inference is indirect. And there is a same situation between the individuals and the city. Their behavior, their thinking also reflect the inference from the city culture, education, and history. As a result, like Pokemon Go, art site can take advantage of the technologies allowing people to share their personal stories and narrative. Even the artist can gather the general public thoughts, also enable to convey their aesthetic aspect. Through these communications, we are able to realize the city culture and become a, a part of city history. So we hope our city, we, we hope our, our community won't be constrained to Dallas or one specific city we would like to co connect multiple cities and communities. This interactivity engages people from all over the world to provide their opinions, experience, and story to build the meaning and share the memories. It also provokes more creativity and renders the place of city, place of art in the city from invisible to visible. So our design process helps us to identify the right problem to solve. First, we did, a, we did a research on the public art. 
And second, we did a practice to take a public art, art walk in Dallas to immerse ourselves into the environment around public art to stand in users' shoes. Third, we gather the opinions of both experts and general public so that we can design a satisfied service. So at the beginning, we only have an idea. Actually, I don't know what is public art very much. So we not only did the literature review to have a good sense of public art, but also we, we reached several UT Dallas professors with, with a variety of specialty to have a different view on our project, each of whom engages in art but from different perspectives. They share their personal insights into public art and their perspective about how technology and emerging communication can be used to enhance the experience of public art. So at the, at the suggestion of Professor Bonnie Pittman, a, director, a, a former director of Dallas Museum of Art, we made a practice to work through the program called Public Art Walk Dallas. It is a free self-guided art work promoting a health, healthy lifestyle through increased awareness and appreciation of public art in downtown Dallas. We have to immerse ourselves closely to the experience of public art to understand who is our art community. And let me introduce my partner, Shuti. She will talk about how we, how we view this scenario, how we target our audience. Seventy-three participants responded to a survey, and we learned that uh, people want public art to be accessible, meaningful, and interactive. They want to experience the art and not just see them. Nearly 50% of the uh, participants said that they don't pay attention or they don't make time to go see a public art. From the survey results and interview with experts, uh, we then created an empathy map. Uh, an empathy map helps us understand what our target users see, hear, think, and feel when they're in a place where there is public art. With this information, we began to question, how can we encourage people to notice and interact with public art? How can we enhance their experience with public art? And how can, how can people become aware of the of public art around them? These questions led us to identify a scenario which shows the journey of a user experiencing a public art. This gives us a picture of how our application can enhance their, their experience with the public art. Now before we talk about the uh, design process, uh, let's take a look at what our site is. Hi, my name is Joyce. I'm an art designer from Seoul, Korea, who enjoys travel and art. On a recent trip to Texas, I spent the afternoon exploring public art in downtown Dallas. My sole companion was my trusty smartphone armed with a new app called ArtSight. Here is my story. Where to start? I took out my phone and logged into ArtSight, went to the chat room, looking for recommendations on where to begin. On our side, I responded, start at the Nasher. This museum is fantastic. I pressed the Nasher picture, and our site provided information about the museum. Pressing the address popped up a map. Off I went on my journey. While walking, I used the newsfeed feature to catch up with the latest postings from my family and friends. I was immediately drawn to the amazing collection of sculpture in the outdoor garden of the Nasher. Here is an interesting piece, a selfie. The museum is so beautiful, I want to share it with my friends and family and other outsiders. Outside, next suggested, we explore a nearby park called Thanksgiving Square. Interesting architecture. Wow, magnificent. Look at the ceiling.
Next stop, Pioneer Plaza. Yeehaw! Cowboys and cattle drives. It's nice to see all the families and children enjoying the art. Time to get up close with a longhorn. I end my afternoon lounging by the new Dallas Police Memorial. On our site, I review the day's adventures in my personal journal. The world is certainly a beautiful place. Thank you, Outside, for sharing my afternoon and guiding me on my experience. Stand on the side of art. So, let me talk about how we design it and how we approach our goal and the overall the interaction design process. We put a lot of effort during the research process. Now we get a, a kind of concrete foundation to build the art, to build our app. The map mapping helps us to organize the topic space in order to have a better understand it. So we use mind mapping to visualize the potential direction of our project by specifying its purpose, enhancements, definitions, and functions. Then we start to do the prototype. We create a low fidelity prototype and have users test them and iterate the design until it is good enough. We use drawing and sketching to prototype. The benefit is less time to prepare a delicate prototype, but we have more time to work on design. We can make the design changes more easily during the test. So after we test out the flow, we develop a design language to unify the, the experience as demonstrated in this high fidelity prototype. The high fidelity interactive prototype are made as close to a real graphical representations of the product as we can allow us to thorough the testing on all the detailed aspects, including the user interface components colors, layouts, the information hierarchy, the mental load of screen on users, and the other interactions. So now we have a high vitality prototype, which is more close to our real product. Judy will explain what is a usability testing and some insights we have learned from the testing. Um, so now, usability testing is a way of evaluating the application with potential target users. This helps the researchers know how easy or difficult um, it is for our users to use the application. Um, with us, we conducted usability tests with four participants and we identified eight issues. Um, on a high level, people found the application uh, valuable. It was easy for them to navigate and use in general. But the most prominent finding um, was with respect to the journal feature. Uh, people couldn't tell if the journal that they see was their own journal or if it was uh, somebody else that they are looking at. And also a sense of personal connection with the journal had to be improved. Um, so now Kobe will talk about the future of our site. So we heard some feedback from usability testing participants. There are some refinements. So we went back to the low fidelity prototype we took advantage of, of form structure to narrate an experience that allowed individual to see the progress while engaging their ideas to create a visual poetry. We would like our app to entertain our users and enhance their experience of appreciating public art. And actually, this is my master thesis project, and our site is still under design process, and we will keep conceiving more interesting features and refined defects to enhance the user experience. And if you would like to catch up on any progress or updates, feel free to connect us, or you can visit the UT Dallas Art Site Lab website, and we are glad to hear your feedback. Thank you. So we have a few moments for questions uh, in the back. How many art works of public art does Dallas have? Maybe you can speak to the art, the Dallas Art Walk. The Dallas Walk is over 50. 50. Yeah. 
just only the artwork. And I, I think one of the things that the, the, the students are trying to present here is that <clears throat> Dallas may not be known for its public spaces. Um, however, that doesn't mean that they don't exist or that they're not meaningful to the community. And I, it's, it's interesting, if, if I can embarrass them for a second, uh, Kuo Wei is from Taiwan. He's been in the States for a year and a half. Shruti is from Bangalore, India. And it took two international students to come to Dallas and to say, you know, I want to engage and understand the city through its public art. And um, that was, I think, in part the motivation for this project is understanding the city through the, the art that exists there outside of the museums. Um, I, th I think this, this serendipitous bricolage that we had, sort of, the, sort of a pivot, is using the form of poetry to narrate public art. The journal um, that you saw in the video was, uh, as, as Shruti mentioned, a little bit awkward in terms of capturing it. So we wanted to spur the individual's imagination of creating, using that form of poem, whether it be a couplet, two lines, a haiku, five lines, a sonnet, uh, 14 lines, um, in, to give them a narrative structure to, to string together their experiences, something that's finite and completable, but then also renders that visible to, to other individuals who may want to engage with the public art as well. So this is the next semester, Wade and Shruti are going to be wor working on how, to, how do we create that narrative in the, in the digital space. Michael. Um, thanks very much. Uh, I, I was really happy to see that, among other things, that you guys used an empathy map uh, to try to experience class of any field, see, do, hear. Um, I've got a little bit of a, I'd just like for you to talk a little bit more about, you, one of you guys talked about, um, you did it in a survey, you had an end group of 70 something on the front end of this. I'm just curious, how did you populate that survey? Uh, where, where, where did the people come from? Was there a broad cross section? Most of them, I, I, I post my survey on the social media, and most of them are, actually most of them are the student and who and who using the internet more or less. So were, they were other UPD students? Yeah. So that's, I, 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 I'll pass up. It's kind of a loaded question, but, but in, in, in a good way. Um, I just wonder maybe as you go forward with this, uh, as somebody who taught in our Design Research Center in downtown Dallas for, for eight years. One of the hardest problems that we had uh, down there was getting people even who work there uh, every day, and the art was in just you know a few steps of where they were, getting them out to go and see it. So I just wonder if, if a, it looks like maybe a good next next step or a series of steps might be to see if you could expand that survey if you could get some you know, constituent groups represented that are outside that UT. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Actually, uh, we were also thinking that this, the initial survey that we did was like a first step for us to get started, in, to get a direction of where to go. But uh, like you said, yeah, I think we had to kind of spread out the survey, like the people that we target on to get the information, um, to get diverse opinion, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. One other, sorry, I've got a little peppered with food for some questions. When you guys did your lo-fi prototypes, um, did you involve some of the people who were involved in, in, with your survey? Were they some of the testers for those lo-fi prototypes? Yes. Just how, how I mean, and what, 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 what did you guys learn from, from uh, what they were able to tell you during that lo-fi prototype? Yes, I'll just add on to what he was saying. We'll get to you. Get, get to that, that your question. Um, so yeah, so initially uh, we did some, uh, our, he was involved in conducting a little bit of um, study with maybe not the same people who we surveyed with, but they're just another, another set of students to kind of get to see how they interact with the application or if, if what we think makes sense may also make sense to them. Um, and then once we did the high, high fidelity prototype and it was more interactive application that we could show, show to people, that's when we did a proper usability study uh, to see how, how valuable people think it is. 
Yeah, and just one more thing, we'll get to your question, sir. I, I think the original concept didn't include a diary journal idea. I, I, that's kind of, I wondered how that had, if that bubbled up yeah. during that. And, and if I'm remembering correctly, I think that's where it emerged that there needs to be some kind of narrative structure that the individual provides. They mentioned the three components that the art needs to be accessible, meaningful, and then interactive. And that provides the level of interactivity for one to put their stamp, if you will, on the, on the space. And so we're experimenting with the narrative form currently. Good question, Michael. Yes. Where are the pamphlets? <laughs> so my question is actually is are you going to use in the second phase of this project some augmented reality in order to provide some different audiences maybe some guide tools or some experience that is different from just uh, having a uh, uh, an app that provides information of course and is interactive because you can write your own uh, uh, reflections, but is there a way actually to work that you're thinking actually to connect some that something that is not real and you can see only on the screen and that interact with the public art in order to make this Pokemon uh, uh, effect visible in, in your, in your uh, app? That, that is a good suggestion. And I, actually, I, I didn't think about that. And yes, thank you. So you did start from public. Yeah. There are some, uh, as perhaps others here can speak to better than I can, AR um, provides some problematic issues uh, as, as well. I, I want to say it's Klaus Oldenburg's work where there's defacing of work, public work through AR. Uh, as, as well, and it presents its own unique challenges uh, as, as well. I, I think I agree. I think it's something to explore. Can you speak to that a little bit more? How might it be remixed? Well, you, I mean, you could, I mean, it basically doesn't have to be an AR like subscription. Yeah, sure. Be, I don't know, embracing the Confederate memorial and like a different person on it. Yeah. Whatever it is, one of the big fears expressed in some of those writings is that it's, things, it's pretty easy to take things out of context or, or slam things together you wouldn't normally slam together. And it, I mean, it looks like that's going to be, uh, I say this was kind of on my face, a hot and messy debate yeah. uh, that's coming up pretty soon that, that you know, maybe one that we need to be out. Yeah. Well, I think you don't need to to face in order to integrate a kind of narrative structure. I mean, you already have this poetry kind of in place, perhaps based on the popularity of the response to poetry, maybe as they're approaching the art, we they can put their phone up and they see the poem displayed in such a way. So you, you kind of go on a journey in this kind of integration of the literary landscape. You're making an actual physical literary landscape that is integrated with the public art. I mean, I think the other opportunity is like the, the uh, survey said like most people don't read the yeah. curatorial whatever yeah. anyways. And actually, that's one of the, I mean, if you look at like what's the power dynamic of art in general in this curatorial, game curatorial right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like that notion that in the public space that people don't even look at anyways, that you could even start to say, let's replace whatever label you want as an interpretive thing that makes it also more accessible. In fact, and democratize. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And like, yeah. in fact, um, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts used to run a program called the King Arts Council. And they did this, and it, it lived while they had these amazing staff there. And it, I don't know if it still exists, but um, they actually worked with young people in lots of different ways, but one of the ways was to create youth responses to the work, to poetry or just writing, that they put up next to the curatorial labels with no identification. So it didn't actually make minimize it as youth contributions because it was just a label next to the work. And so it was this democratizing thing around accessibility of uh, 
um, um, interpretation of the world, which, you know, they basically democratize that six square inches of power that exists next to every decayed part. And they, to give you a sense of the, the engagement, uh, old, you know, blue haired ladies from the museum would go to the, the bookstore and be like, oh, I want a book of poetry by the poet who responded to this painting. And, you know, the uh, bookstore is calling stab, like, what do we tell them? <laughs> what do we do? Like, because even for the classic audience for that work, it was just this really different way of thinking. So, right. There was a presentation, uh, this is three weeks ago, I don't know if any of you guys were there, uh, the AIGA National Conference in Minneapolis that got to this a little bit. There was a fellow from Australia uh, who worked for Google Works for Google, and he was doing this with uh, literature, basically. Mm -hmm. You sort of walk around, <coughs> there's, a, uh, there's an app, there's a there's mod man's reality experience, but you can do sort of the James Joyce tour of, and say double and correct me if I'm wrong. And the democratizing part of that is you, you, you go to all these places and you, you start to learn how all these different, uh, as he is, is phrasing, not my contextual docs start to connect. There are several pieces uh, at the Nasher in, in Dallas, and there's some other pieces that were, how shall I say, fraught with controversy, uh, when, especially when they received public funding to yeah. be commissioned. And so there's, there's that kind of story that, that maybe could be told, and, um, where you can hear from some of the voices of the people who protested against public funding being <coughs> on that. Meeting. However broadly you want to throw that net, um, but that's another way. And then people could add, keep adding that to further democratize. People keep, can keep adding to that commentary. That's I mean you've got you're 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 already capturing data. I know that's sometimes a scary word or phrase to use through the journal that the, the journal that has happened. And as a journal, I've, I've got some friends and, that I teach with at UNT who teach linguistic anthropology that clap their hands together when they know that that kind of thing is being captured. So and there's all sorts of uh, really neat stuff that you can tease out. Like the previous presenter was talking about uh, the historiography uh, around some of these things, or, um, you know, social, technological, economic, environmental, political sort of belief systems in play. It sort of go as, as far or uh, maybe make it really tailored to perhaps uh, in particular figures in that way. We had a comment on, on this side or a question. Yeah, actually I've got a couple of uh, um, quick comments about the project. Really great project. And anything you get for people to like go and actually know this public art is great. Um, the first question I had was um, one of the things about being in, you know, I do arts communication. Your arts communication has to look better than other communication. It just does, because you're in the arts, right? And so I wonder if you've actually worked with a graphic design student or something to kind of, you know, sort of up the, the level of the interface. That would be the first thing. The way the interface looks currently, it looks like a lot of social media apps, right? You, you, you got to up your game when you're talking about art, because that helps bring in the people that might actually, something pretty, something aesthetic, something provocative, but something. The second thing is, is that in your presentation, the film, which was great, and it made me understand how to use the app, but, uh, and I know that it was probably a first round film, but um, having actually a real narrative, and by real I'm making the air quotes, in it rather than the, the holder place uh, narrative, the Latin, will make me understand that narrative piece a little better, make me a little more excited. There was, you know, I didn't need to look at the app very hard because I saw that it was placeholder. Um, and then the third thing is that part of the problem with uh, Dallas, I'm guessing, is the climate. It's very hot to walk around and see public art. And so I actually wonder if you might want to have a GPS for casual encounters where someone actually is walking by and their phone buzzes because they're actually near that GPS spot. Because what do you do when your phone buzzes? You pull it out. And then there's art side, right there, ready to talk to them about the piece. That would also help with people with disabilities who might not know that they are near a piece of public art or who may use that vibration to actually alert them to things. And so it's sort of thinking about the accessibility piece of it as well. Those are my three comments. So I, I thank you for the accessibility 
portion. That's that's something that uh, is is absolutely important to a project like this. If we are going to roll it out to a, a public audience and, well, and, and embrace that. Well, one of the that. things about the accessibility piece is, of course, smartphone versus not smartphone, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but at least you can think about some people who might have access issues and have a smartphone. Great feedback. Thank you. Other questions, comments? All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Appreciate it.